Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Po, and today I'm doing week nine of my 2020 reads. This week I finished two nonfiction books. So the first book that I finished was Showtime at the Apollo by Ted Fox, illustrated by James Otis Smith. This was such a cool book. It's something that I picked up on a complete whim. I was just at my library and saw it displayed and I was interested and I picked it up and I'm so glad that I did. It's a graphic novel adaptation of a book written in the 1980s about the history of the Apollo Theater in Harlem. Um, this book was written in the 80s by some white guy who just was interested in the topic and went around and basically collected oral histories. So he talked to all of these different performers and all of these different people who worked at the Apollo and community members and people who were just big in the entertainment scene through the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, getting information from them and trying to understand how the Apollo fit into the history of people in Harlem as well as the history of sort of the black entertainment scene and it's fascinating. I loved this book so much. Um, it breaks up the chapters into specific topics and specific eras, so you know 30s, 40s, 50s. It talks about a lot of the impact of what was going on socially, a lot of the civil rights movement, a lot of kind of the uh, issues with um, what was going on in Harlem itself as we get into like the 70s and 80s and it's just really fascinating as a history especially as an oral history it's so much of this is just the memories of those performers and the people who worked there and I loved that I love oral histories um, I think that this may not work for everybody because it is so many different people's memories that it's not necessarily a cohesive narrative across the book it's much more little tidbits and little pieces of information that as a whole give you an understanding of what was going on. I learned a ton of different things, just so much better understanding of what was going on. Uh, one of the cool things too was that as I was reading this, um, Justin over at Ghost Reader, who I will link below, was doing his topics in Black History for February, and he was talking also about like the Harlem Renaissance, which is what was happening at the time that kind of the Apollo was starting to get off the ground. Um, and just the, I just love, I just love the history and I love the topic and I love the music and what was so cool in this book was there were plenty of artists that I was already familiar with. Billie Holiday and Ella Fitzgerald are favorites of mine, um, but there were also so many people who were so popular in their heyday that I don't necessarily know. So for example, the Shirelles, I'd never heard of the Shirelles, um, but I spent a lot of time on YouTube looking up all of these different artists and fell in love with some of them. So the Shirelles have a great song called Mama Said, which maybe I've heard of, like maybe I've heard this play before, but I didn't associate it with their name and yeah, it's excellent. Another one is Dinah Washington, who has the song What a Difference a Day Makes. I've been listening to that on loop. It is so good. Um, and I'll link all of these artists below and their music in case you want to listen. But yeah, this book was so cool. I loved this oral history. I loved learning about Harlem, about the music scene, about all these different artists, about their experiences. And the book does not shy away from some of the more difficult sides, things like they were worked to the bone when they performed at the Apollo. It was really crazy, but also there was such a connection to the community. I mean, it was just, so much fun. Um, I did read this over quite a few weeks. I spread it out just little chunks and I think that that's the way to go at this because it isn't like a narrative. It's just lots of pieces of information. In some senses this might read like a very long Wikipedia article but illustrated uh, which you know I'm, I'm into. I thought it was a lot of fun. So I gave this book five out of five stars and if anybody else likes oral histories, likes music from you know uh, kind of that jazz through, I guess, soul, funk, um, disco age. It's really fun to read about all of that behind the scenes and understanding how politics were also influencing what was going on. So I recommend it. The other book I finished this week was another nonfiction called Unapologetic, a Black, Queer, and Feminist Mandate for Radical Movements by Charlene A. Carruthers. 
this book was really good um and it was another random thing that i picked up from my library I just saw it displayed on a shelf and thought i wanted to read it and it was good it was so good my librarians are awesome so this book is something that i was reading for my social justice nonfiction project um, i'll link the video explaining what that is below so i will be doing a separate video where i talk about the ideas that are in this uh so i won't go into too much depth here but basically what this book is is it's a book that talks about how to create movements, social justice movements that are kind of advocating for really radical changes. So not just slight bits of progress, slight bits of reform, but really like let's change the systems um, from a very intersectional lens. Uh, Carruthers makes the argument that it's important that when we approach social justice and equity and liberation that we do it from the perspective of those most marginalized those with the most intersectional personalities because they have kind of the most to say and when we want to have freedom and equality and justice for everyone we need to make sure that includes everyone so i thought it had a lot of really strong arguments about this intersectional approach i think it also talked a lot about how important it is to not just try to make minor reforms but to instead use imagination use imagination to create a future to create a world that is better than what we have and I thought that those arguments were really strong it reminded me a lot of the things that I hear in Jiri at Onyx pages who I will link below talk about all the time um, this idea of black imagination this idea of intersectionality this idea of really focusing on uplifting the voices and experiences of black queer feminists, all sorts of great things. Um, and Jiri in particular has a, very, a video from over a year ago uh, that I think she was giving a speech to other lawyers talking about the importance of um, kind of like Afrofuturism and black speculative fiction and really imagination through fiction and how important that is in terms of political um, movements. So I will link that video below because I think if you're interested in that topic, it's a really good intro to it. This book I felt was maybe a little bit more advanced than um, I necessarily am. So definitely while I got a lot out of the beginning half, which was talking about what these movements are and why they're important. The second half of the book focused a lot more on how to organize these movements, how to lead um, organizations that fight for social justice and these sorts of things. And I, I just wasn't able to connect with that as much. Um, I wasn't able to also necessarily follow it. There's a lot of history that goes into this. And while she explains a lot of that, I still felt like I lacked a lot of context, which is totally okay. And in the book, I mean, Carruthers calls out, she's like, look, this book is not for white women. Um, that's not who I'm talking, talking to. I'm directing this at leaders within our own movement. And so it's, you know, it's totally fine that I didn't get everything, um, but I still got a lot out of getting getting a better understanding of what's going on and what this intersectional approach is and why imagining better systems is so important. So I got a lot out of this um, and I'll talk more in depth about all of these topics uh, when I do a video on this, which won't go up this week, but maybe next week I'll get it up. So I gave this four out of five stars. And if you're interested in this topic, I think uh, it's well worth the read. Uh, and if you're only like kind of semi interested and not really sure, then I just recommend subscribing to Injuri's channel because she's got a lot of great stuff to say that I saw mirrored in this book. And I think that um, approaching it through fiction is something that's really doable for a lot of us. So definitely subscribe to Onyx Pages. Again, I will link all of that below. Okay, so that wraps up week nine for me. I had a great reading week. I really like it when I get in some good nonfiction. Um, I am going to be on vacation next week. I'm going on the Joko Cruise, which uh, is a really cool, basically 
nerd convention at sea. Jonathan Colton is a musician who does very, very funny songs. Um, I'll link some of my favorite songs of his below, but very nerdy things like talking about Ikea or looking at cat pictures on the internet or um, kind of like zombies that are just your co-workers that work, these sorts of things. Uh, and this cruise is a week-long kind of convention at sea of musicians and comedians and authors. Some really cool authors are going to be on it. Uh, Yun Ha Lee, Martha Wells, Patrick Rothfuss, John Scalzi, and Kate Jemison. Um, so very cool and hopefully Sish and I will get to go and see them talk about a couple of different things. Um, and we're going on this cruise with my parents. They just, they like cruises and so they're going to go with us. So that should be a lot of fun. If anybody else is going to be on the Joko cruise, let me know. We can connect. Um, and oh, because I'm going to be on vacation, week 10, I will not do a separate uh, weekly wrap up, but instead I'll just kind of bundle that with week 11. So I'll do a week 10 and 11, which means next week I'll just have a couple of videos that I will pre record going up, and the weekly wrap up will go up the following week. I'm sure you guys will be fine. So, yes, if anybody has read, the books that I talked about this week, um, I'm not sure what kind of widespreadness they have, but if you've read those or anything similar or you've read anything else about like the Harlem Renaissance or about just social justice movements in general, go ahead, leave me a comment, tell me what you think below, any recommendations you have, I'd love to hear from you.